Folks, folks at home, welcome to Tank Tuesday. We got the big 300 gallon bass tank, and if you watched with us last week, looks like we got a bass fanning out of bed right here, and it's gotten bigger and bigger. I have been out of town working and fishing, so I haven't been able to put a camera on this, but we're gonna get a 24 hour camera on this to see which bass is doing this. But in case you're new, we got two pet bass, Bonnie right there, that's the main suspect. We also have Clyde, and then the big mean bluegill named Sheriff. We got some good things coming up involving music here in just a little bit. All right, these are our other tanks. This is our 10 gallon minnow tank. We also have a pet blue crawfish in there named Heisenberg. He hangs out in a little shelter. And then last week we asked you all, is it possible for them to reproduce on their own? And the overwhelming response was no, that's not that type of crawfish. So it's just you down there, Heisenberg, for a little while. Up here, 55 gallon tank. We got Moby front and center, life of the party. Catfish down on the bottom hiding out. And as always, we're gonna start off by feeding Moby a minnow. He's the special bass with the appetite of a giant. So. Moby, one coming up. And we got our cat Lily right here that's always interested in the tank happenings. Back to the minnow. He's ready. Got him. Just like that. Alright, while Liz is getting set up to do our weekly 10 gallon tank cleanup, we're going to let you all take a peek at Heisenberg. There he is. Barely see him in there. Come on out, buddy. There's Heisenberg. We're going to put him in a little dish off to the side while she cleans the tank. You can see he's molted his old shell and grown a new shell. Got good coloring on it. He's going to be a growing boy. This is how Larry lets you know when it's feeding time. <laughs> he goes claws out. He says, don't forget about me in here. Crawfish got to eat too. That's a pretty good defense mechanism though. I'd hide if I was the bass. All right, since he's got his pincher out, we're gonna go ahead and feed him. I think we can drop some shrimp pellets right down the chimney there. Yep, we got a little small opening there. We're gonna try to put some shrimp pellets in there. I'll drop it right down in there to him. And he doesn't have to be so defensive. All right, we're gonna try to use these long pinchers to deliver the payload in the top of the chimney and see if we can keep that guy right there from getting it, but it's gonna be tough. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to attempt the first ever hand feeding a crawfish. Hand to mouth, or should I say hand to pincher. Going in. Oh, and it was a success. Sheriff's picking on Larry now. So is Clyde. Circling this house right when it's feeding time. Won't let him eat. In peace. Sheriff said if there's food down there, it's supposed to be for me. Now I've raised pet bass my whole life and I love learning stuff about them. You learn about their feeding habits, about how water temperatures affect them, things like that. So in this video, we're gonna try to do another little learning experiment. So they love Liz because every time they see Liz, she's dropping a dozen minnows in there for them. And these bass kind of get to where they react to people and humans and sights of things differently. So I wanna do a little experiment, kind of like Pavlov used to do, and just see how these fish will react to music because there's certain cues, like for instance, a net. Let's watch how they react to a net. They get really excited, they know that minnows are coming, and they will gravitate towards it. Even if they're down there under the tree, they know that it's feeding time. So what I want to see if we can do is like maybe cue some Jaws music right before feeding time and eventually get them keyed in to know that that's when the food's about to drop in. So I just bought this speaker that is supposed to be 100% waterproof, and if it turns out it is, I'll leave you all a link down in the description in case you're interested in it. But we're going to link up with our phones to this and play some music. And one cool thing about this is it has a suction cup, so we can just stick it to the side of the tank. Now I'm going to play music to where the fish can hear it, but we can't because I don't want to be getting copyright strikes. So I'm going to put it in the tank, let the fish get settled in with it, and about 30 minutes later, cue up some music, and you know what song we have to start off with. Their theme song, Bonnie and Clyde. Power on.
All right, folks, we just got it installed. I'm gonna leave it sitting there for a second. Just let them get acclimated to it, and then we're gonna cut the music on. All right, playing Bonnie and Clyde now. Definitely seems like they're kind of gravitating towards the middle a little bit. Still don't know if they know where the source of it is. Bonnie just yawned. <laughs> That's what she thinks about the music. Look at her going to her bed. Oh, she's backing out. Bonnie's quite active. Maybe she does like the music. She maybe kind of looks like she's playing a little bit of defense on Sheriff there and just backing him away from her bed. Watch, anytime he gets close to the bed, she starts pushing him away. Well, it's starting to be a little bit interesting. So Bonnie and Clyde's got her in the moving into the spawning stage. And Clyde is chilling over there. <laughs> Doesn't want any part of it. I'm fixing to kick off another song here. Don't want to play the music in the video, but just a quick look at it. You guys probably recognize that tune. This will be our country edition. We're going to see how they react to country music. We got Clyde out of his little hiding spot. Bonnie over there checking him out. She's definitely active. She seems to like the music more than the rest of them. Let's get a little zoomed in shot going here. All of them. Clyde's out of his spot. I think she's definitely in the spawning mode right now. And the music may be disturbing her, may be getting her excited. I don't know what it's doing. You can tell she's probably got eggs. Look at how big she is there. Sheriff creeping a little closer to the music. Fishing in the dark. That's what they do most of the nights of the week. We drop the minnows in. If they don't eat them all, they go catch them in the dark. Bonnie back to the bed. That's pretty cool. She's probably gonna spawn right there on those stumps of that bonsai tree. They always look for something hard. If you guys are out there and you fish very much, fish want a hard bottom, and that's probably what she'll try to spawn, right there on the stumps. And she's gonna have trouble keeping Sheriff away. And a lot of you guys asked us last week, if Bonnie spawns, what will you do with Sheriff? Well, we'll have to take him out of here. Sheriff, sorry buddy, but I know you'd eat every little fingerling that came. Look at it, he's about to try to eat the Miramo. He tries to eat everything. So we would take him out of the aquarium and let it just be Bonnie and Clyde until the fingerlings hatched and then we may put them in a tank of their own and try to raise them up. All right, so we're getting some activity out of them. You can see uh, Clyde's kind of migrating over here. He doesn't really know what's going on. That's very rare for him to be over here on the Bonnie side of the tank. Everybody's kind of migrating to the center of the tank. Maybe they're just liking hearing something new or music for the first time just in general. Now, let's mix it up with a little hip-hop music or something they have definitely never heard. What about some Cardi B? All right, we got Cardi B playing. This is a shout out for the younger generation out here and all the crazy music that you folks listen to. Definitely got the fish active, moving around a little bit more than they were. Oh, we got the yawn from Clyde. So Bonnie doesn't like country music. Clyde doesn't like hip-hop music. Sheriff's just kind of wiggling around to everything. These fish don't yawn that often, and they've definitely yawned during some of this music, so we're starting to see what kind of taste they have, and it's opposite. All right, and for our final experiment, we're gonna play some Jaws music right before we feed them, and like I mentioned earlier, I wanna see if we can do like Pavlov did and train these fish to hear something like a Jaws tone and know that within five minutes, it's gonna be feeding time and them get excited about it. So we're gonna cue up the Jaws music and then unleash a pile of minnows into the tank. All right, we are about to cue up the Jaws music now. Bonnie moving up a little bit. All fish moving higher in the water column. You can tell they know feeding's coming. We're gonna let them hear that na 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 for just a second. Bonnie's starting to creep in like a shark. And they're getting ready. Surface feeding coming soon. Bonnie may have her fin sticking out of the water here soon, just like a shark would. Look at him. Clyde's up there. He probably has that top fin sticking out of the water. They know the Jaws music. It's time to eat. All right, Liz, let's bring it into him.
Jaws, dun 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 survived. That's that surfer that barely escaped. Dun 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 All right, folks, while we watch them finish up feeding, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we may see some more of this underwater speaker here in the future with some Jaws music and seeing if we can get these fish accustomed to eating after they hear the music. We're going to keep an eye on who is fanning out the bed. I almost can guarantee you it's Bonnie because she's living in it right now. All right, now we're going to roll through some other fish tank clips that were sent in to us by our subscribers. All right, and this first clip comes from Jake Cunney. He says, I'm 17 years old from Pennsylvania, and this is my pet bass. Looks like you got an aggressive one on your hands, Jake. Appreciate the clip. All right, and this next clip comes from Niz the One. He says, this is my crawfish that I keep in a planted tank, and I have a YouTube channel, Niz the One. Appreciate you sending us that clip. All right, and the last clip comes from SMS Clark 74 He says, your videos inspired me to get my own tank. I have a 10-gallon toothfish. One is a rainbow fish and the other one is an albino quarry catfish. That rainbow fish looks a lot like Moby and he might be a little bit bigger than Moby. So folks, I appreciate y'all sending us the clips. If you want to send us a clip of your own tank, I have an email down in the description of the video you can send that clip to. But I hope y'all enjoyed the video and we'll see you all next week. Bonnie and Clyde were pretty looking people, but I can tell you people, they were the devil's children.